Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my new studio. As you can hear from the reverb, it's still a work in progress. Still I have to do the acoustic treatment, but I hope I will do it soon. And this will be the room that you'll see in my next videos, at least for a bit of time. This video will be a bit of an inspirational video because I want to show you what you can do with Ableton and Ableton only and also a bit of a promotional video because I will show you the, the projects that I shared on Patreon in September and in October. Since I talked to a lot of people who just got started into making music, one of the questions that I have most uh, is what plugins should I buy next to improve my music? The reality is that if you just purchased Ableton Live Suite version, we're talking about the Suite version because the standard one is a bit too limited, or if you are on a budget, you don't need to buy any plugin at all you have all you need inside Ableton. I know that having new plugins get you excited, get you inspired, and I do it all the time as well. But since I started to make projects for Patreon, I found out that limitations actually help you to, get, to be more inspired. Projects, sample packs, MIDI files, presets, everything that I upload month by month on Patreon expire at the end of the month. So what I suggest to you is to stay subscribed and stay updated with all of the content for a cheaper price. Otherwise, with the new month, I upload the expired content on my website, but for a bit of a higher price. So you can decide what, what is the best option for you. One of the things that people overlook the most when buying Ableton are Ableton additional packs. You know that Ableton comes with its uh, samples, its instruments and effects and their presets, but sometimes this might not be enough. So when I look for inspiration, instead of uh, buying new plugins, what I do is looking for these additional packs, what Ableton has to offer, which are included in this suite um, license, so they are free after you bought Ableton. On Ableton 10, if you take a look here, you see this Pax folder, and here you can see the Pax that I already downloaded. So here, if you want more, it says get more Pax at ableton.com. So if we open it, it sends me to my profile, so you need to be signed in. And these are all of the packs that I can download, that I can download for free. There is a lot of stuff. Some of them are very big. On Ableton 11 is even better because if you go here on packs, you can download them directly from Ableton itself. So you see here, 41 available packs, so I can download them from here. Okay, first let's switch to night mode. Okay, so let's dive into the project. So this is the September project, let's quickly check it out. Found the main break. I have to confess that I cheated on a couple of sounds. I used contact, they are just two effects, but then I turned it, them into audio so you find the, the audio file. Anyway, uh, the drums, I used one shot. I tried to experiment a bit on the hi-hats on this one, for example, I used the reducer just to make it a little bit dirtier. On this hat, I tried to use a preset from the flanger. It's called Wiggle. It just gives a bit of movement to the hat. So also consider using these type of effects on your hats, on your snares and uh, percussion so that they're not sounding always the same, but they keep moving. This is without. This is with. It goes a bit in the stereo field, but moving to, you know, the core of this video, I think we can analyze the bass line. Bass line was made with a bass preset that I found, it's called Byte Sized Bass. 
it's a, a sampler, but if you check the preset, it sounds a bit different from my bass line, actually. So I managed to modify a little bit the preset and turn it into a more a subby kind of bass, and that's pretty much it. So this preset is saved and it's in the September pack, but you can also start from this preset and try to quick tweak it. This is a subby bass line, a strong bass line. It works, I tried it in the club. On top of the bass line, we have this other sound, which is made with another Ableton preset made on Collision. So the sound originally was again different. Let's check it out here. Quite different. It reminds me a bit of some of the Platz module presets, but uh, I changed it quite a bit. I also cut it with a low pass filter, a uh, high pass filter, because I wanted just to sit on top of the baseline. But the original one that I modified sounds like this. Okay, so you could even consider using this for a baseline using the lower notes, but with this, it's a bit thinner and on top of the baseline. They kind of play together with a sort of ping pong. But this question and answer type of behavior is not so difficult to make because the two sounds are completely on different frequency levels. Uh, one is a sub, the other one is a mid frequency sound. So you don't have to overthink it. You can just play with an arpeggio on top of the bass line. Now let's move to the synths. Let's start from this sound here called chord bouncing. This is sort of the backbone of the background of the track. And this is made with the instrument called Electric from Ableton. And again, I looked for uh, presets and this is called chord bouncing. So the, the whole chain without these effects is not that different because the falling type of um, behavior is made with uh, the electric. But it was a bit out of control, so I started by using the gate, and the gate stopped the sound when it goes down. Then these are kind of creative effects. These are made with the beat repeaters, and they are all presets from the beat repeaters, stock presets. So there is a bit of glitchiness, a bit of randomness, and these are things that I like, and this is the flanger again. Then I have this chord here, which is kind of weird again. It's made with, let me see, again with the electric from Ableton, but there's uh, actually a rack that you can use with the macros. It's called Steel, Steel Jazz Clean. And then on top of this, I added a bit of weirdness with all of these effects, as you can see. So without the effects, this sounds like this. Okay, very standard with these effects. It sounds like crazy. <laughs> Here you can see my favorite effects from Ableton. Frequency shifter that I love to use in ring mode. Okay, you can really get crazy with this. Then I have uh, flanger, another one of my favorites. Phaser, beat repeater, you can see I use it a lot. So these are the effects that I keep experimenting and improvising with to see if I can achieve nice and funny results. Last but not least, we have the vocals. The vocals are taken from a YouTube video. Chop them and use them here and there to create confusion mainly. So this is how it sounds without the effects first. Of modern touring, died at his hotel in Bogota. Put it well, I'm not a businessman, I'm at the stratosphere. But once I, I, I love this part. Put it well, I'm not a businessman, I'm not a businessman. So the thing with the vocal fan is just again a beat repeater preset. It really makes the vocal glitchy and choppy and, and unpredictable and it's it's very nice. Of modern touring, died at his hotel in Bogota. Put it well, I'm not a businessman, I'm at the stratosphere. But one sometimes even more than instruments, which are good anyway, 
but the effects from Ableton are so nice and so interesting. You can create your own rocks, you can manage with macros, so that's why I tell you it's uh, it's powerful and you should invest more time in learning Ableton. Now I want to move to the October project, which is the October the project that I worked this month on. I tried to make a real minimal kind of track, so not even sure if that's the right definition, but for sure it's a bit different from the DN style. <laughs> so um, I hope you like it anyway. As you can see here in the master chain, I always include a mastering chain with the Ableton stock effects and then I also try to master the track with those on. I, want also, also, I always want to compare them. Starting to talk about the Ableton sounds again, for example, this very interesting um, snare pattern that I have in the track. Okay, I think this gave, gave rhythm to the track. You can also hear it here. So this was made with an Ableton kit, which is called Crystal Clear Kit. So I just used uh, this sound here, but then I modulated the sound a little bit with this LFO, which is linked to the filter which was already in the macros from the kit. The deal was already uh, included in the preset, it was just a bit uh, softer and I tweaked it a little bit. Skipping all of the percussions, I think we can move already to the, to the baseline. So this was a uh, um, baseline that I that I started to make from a preset, a very simple sine wave uh, preset, and then I just added a little bit of this other waveform. It's uh, working in FM, so the sound is a bit um, has a bit more harmonics. Works pretty good. Comes out very well in the mix. It, it works good with the bass, with the kick. And that was made with just with operator with a very simple preset, okay? Let's move to the synths, then you, you might have heard this uh, sort of arpeggio here. This is just a preset again from Ableton, which is called Neptune Ascending. Yeah, it's made with Operator and a bunch of other effects. There is an arpeggiator that it's moving the notes, so the sequence is way simpler than what you hear. I heard this sort of sequence going on when I tried the preview of the sound, so this sequence is what gave me the ideas for the whole track. And I keep it uh, quite simple here. Then it opens up a bit here. Wait. Okay, and then even more here. I also added some notes. Literally by trial and error. Okay, so this is the part before the drop. You can hear in the background I have another sound, which is this fifth pad, so-called fifth, uh, fifth pad, is made with analog, and I use it for the chords. And here I modulate the semitones of the second oscillator to, to add the fifth semitone, which gives you this nice chord here. Then I used this pad here to create more of sort of effect. This is called Fedrick's pad, again from Ableton. It grows up and it's nice here to use in. Okay, to create this sweep, but then I also use it to, in the middle of the breaks. Let's move to this sound here. This is um, another nice thing that I created by starting from this sound, which is called Chasing the LFO, which I modified a little bit. 
just by pressing one single note. So what I did was resampling this sound and then selecting just the parts that I like uh, here with the clip volume. And this is also effective in the mix, so you can hear the sound. You can hear it coming up from time to time. Then we move to this metallic hits here. Which I also had fun by modulating the sound because you can hear that this frequency here Okay, it's interesting, so it changes the sound quite a lot. But also you can see I modulated the filter cutoff, the decay here on the drop and the sustain. So you can have fun when you have all these macros that are created by the Ableton sound designers. You can have fun with them to develop the sound, the sound through the track. So it's a sort of stub that happens from time to time. The last sound that's very interesting for this track is this sort of guitar that I found in the preset here, Guitar Palm Legacy. It's made with the electric again, so it's uh, two different instances of electric in parallel, so it's a very complicated sound. I wouldn't be able to make this sound from scratch, okay? The cool thing of this sound is the simplicity of the sequence, which is just, just a one note sequence, but then it, it, moves, it moves in the track. What I did was adding this filter on, on the guitar frequency. So as you can see, there is this frequency moving here. So, and this gives the rhythm to the track. Because without, It adds space because of its reverb, so I really like that idea. Last but not least, we had the effects. So here we have this sound that I used as a sweep. When I listen to the, to the preview of this preset called M4, I, I immediately heard it was nice to place in, in a sort of uh, end of the cycle, and so that's uh, how I used it. So guys, that's pretty much it. If you think you can learn from this project, you can download it this month on Patreon. So you can choose one of the tiers that include the projects. As you can hear, the drums are made in my classic way. So one shot sounds put placed in the right place to create the right groove, then you can you can see the arrangement, so you can learn more about how to arrange, you can learn about mixing because the track is mixed. But anyway, even if you're not interested in having this project, I hope this video showed you a little bit of what you can find on Ableton, of how many good sounds you can make on Ableton. I really suggest you to explore a little bit more the presets and the packs, the additional packs, as I said, because there's a lot you can use before buying external plugins because before spending more money on other instruments and tools. So I hope this inspired you a little bit and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Yeah.